This is Euphoria, Season 3, Episode 7. Uh, we're available on SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes, and Spotify. There are timestamps in the description if you are on YouTube. Uh, I am joined today by Yamato and Attila. Welcome to both of you. A special shout out to Attila. It is his birthday today, uh, which means it'll be his birthday yesterday by the time you are watching this. So if you somehow missed Attila's birthday, now is your time to jump on Twitter or any other social media, Vitality Discord, if there is one. Get in there. Give this man a happy birthday. How old are you, Attila? Old enough to win LEC this year. Old enough to win LEC this year. That's all we needed. We don't need a, no specifics <laughs> necessary. Um, before we get into things, guys, a couple bet updates. Yamato dinner and karaoke is happening on a Sunday. Yamato is here. We are figuring it out, I promise. It is going to happen. Uh, it's looking like Johnny Cash is now uh, what we're going to go for for song. Frost and Quick Shot still have a tattoo bet and Upset and Norskaren will still get to put a pie in my face at some point. Um, once again, TBD. Uh, before we talk about all of the exciting things about the league, the season this week, how how is everything in the land of vitality? Seems like things are going well. Obviously, you're the birthday boy. Do you have anything special planned today? Like, are you just gonna you gonna skip scrims, or are you just gonna like ask everyone in solo queue never to ban Draven against you for like one day because it's your birthday? How do you celebrate? I mean, honestly, I'm not uh, this kind of person that actually celebrates birthday, and even less when you have work. And you know, work is work, and I'm doing what I like, so. Uh, if it's in a day that we have to work, then I'll just work all day. It's, it's my, it's my jam. <laughs> all right, good work ethic. I have some things planned. Ooh, oh. are they are they like surprise things? Like you can't, yes. obviously, yeah, okay. Only I'm playing the Raven today on the screens. <laughs> 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 Give us a special day. I'm suddenly, not good, man. I was... <laughs> <laughs> suddenly your jungler's playing Ivern. You've got a tank in the top lane, and you're like, okay, it's all on you, bud. For the rest of the day, it's the Attila show. <laughs> <laughs> That could be pretty hype. Um, well, keep us posted. I, I expect at least a little bit of social media for the people at home to see what epic birthday celebrations happen. Mm. But otherwise, good stuff. Um, well, let's jump into week five of the LEC then. Uh, or week six. Week six of the LEC. Didn't Time is flying, that. man. Time is Holy. flying. It's quick. We were supposed to do this like tier list thing like halfway through the season, and now it's like more than halfway. Mm. I'll be honest, we're running behind here on the old podcast. But before <laughs> we talk about the tier list... Um, a lot, of, a lot of stuff went down. Um, and before we talk about what happened with you guys this week, let's hit some of the other teams. Um, so first question, Rogue versus Excel. Best game of the split, right? Has to be, right? It was an absolute banger. Urgot in the jungle. Um, how are you guys feeling about it? I, it was a thrill to watch, I'll say that much. I think it was just uh, the junglers trying to one-up each other and who gets top reddit. Ooh. And uh, when he pulled out the Urgot jungle, I think that was what it was, nothing else. And then, uh, I don't know, the game, I barely watched it. <laughs> it's one of those games you drink your tea to and kind of ignore, you know, it's background music. Do you feel the same? I think it was exciting. You think it was exciting? <laughs> there you go, until it gives you, that's what I yeah, want to hear. I, I was like on backstage, we were preparing to the game, I completely lost focus. I thought we were playing a different game, like not League of Legends at all. Like yeah. I was laughing and Laughing a lot, so we have a, them. We we decided in the back in the cast room for games like this that we really want like a red button where it turns on like the Bartle Royale thing and the Ring of Fire just slowly <laughs> starts closing and they eventually have to kill each other. Yeah. But uh, uh, I mean, in the end, uh, Rogue One does seem like they're getting a little bit better as far as teams go. Um, the other big thing that is interesting to me is that Shalka just completely tanked this week. It seemed like now, admittedly, they had kind of a tough schedule uh, in, in G2 and then also in SK, which I would have normally said. Um, obviously, there's a, the whole trash talk thing, but outside of the outside of the trash talk thing, uh, I'm curious where you guys think Schalke reign right now because they looked like they were going to contest you for second, and then you beat them, and now they're falling off a cliff. So is this still, do you guys still think this team like ranks in top three right now? Are they still up there? Go ahead. Uh, I actually never thought that they were that good as people said. That they were like I was surprised when they got into top teams. You know, like when 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 I see the roster, I don't see like a really that stacked team or, or at all. And like the way that we lost the very first day of LEC when it started, I think it was just us running around, like mm -hmm. getting poked in the bar and by the Ezreal and just throwing the game away. And after I think like they they were consistently uh, consistently good. Props to them, but. After, as you can see, like the other teams are going to get better and better, and I think they're just stuck in the same level, and that's what happens to them. I think, like for example, teams such as Origin and Fnatic right now are fairly better than uh, Schalke. 
dang, that's quick. So they just like just came in a little bit stronger, and now they're just failing to get any stronger from there. Um, Yamana, do you share that opinion? Do you feel like this is a team that like doesn't isn't really going to go up anymore, and it's just kind of capped out? I think Schalke figured out the way they want to play rather early. I think uh, there was a big identity crisis going on uh, in the early weeks uh, of uh, the LEC. Uh, Attila mentioned our game against them, where we just like we just forgot how to do Nash. Which is first game of the season, I don't mind too much, but uh, I think the hard parts of the game we uh, delivered better. I think um, uh, they are at the level where they should be. I think a lot of the, a lot of the other teams are improving uh, more rapidly, and I'm looking more at Fnatic and OG and us and G2, and I think they're going to fall behind. Interesting. It's it's tough to me because for I like wanted to. Didn't think anything about Schalke, honestly, coming in. I thought they'd be pretty mediocre. Like, you look at that lineup, and it's like, it seems like it could be okay. They clicked really well in the beginning, which I think was super surprising, and which is why they kind of rose for me very quickly. But then um, when I was watching back some of their games in the early weeks, it definitely did not look as clean as I remembered it now that I've seen some of these faults. So maybe it was just rose-tinted glasses. Like, I was like, oh, I'm so surprised by this team that I was just willing to give them the benefit of the doubt. Um, The last little thing that happened was... The insane game that was Vitality versus Fnatic. Uh, highlight moments including Jack Troll stealing an Elder Dragon, but like super, super chaotic game. Now, I'll be honest, I thought you were doomed the second Mowgli got off to a bad start, but you guys did pull it back. And despite we Fnatic. Been. <laughs> yeah, it, despite Fnatic almost winning, I mean, like this was a, a surprisingly close game, all things considered, especially after the start. How did it, how did you feel about it, Attila? What was your perspective on this game overall? I mean, this game, I think one of the lanes that got affected by the early passing and everything that happened on level one, I think it was bot lane because, you know, like Nocturne steals red, then stays bot lane for quite some long time. And then you're playing against uh, Lucian with Torrance Ring and Rakan poking you under turret. You're crying. You're like, please, I want to, I want, I don't want to be here. Like, I just, <laughs> I just don't, you know, like break, the, break the game somehow or get me out of here. And then basically, uh, yeah, it was real rough. Like, but honestly, Kavashar was doing really good. Kavasharti is always doing a really good display, honestly, so uh, we always had a way of actually doing something and we just pull it out and <laughs> they were g- getting engaged all the time, like, mm. I don't know why, and they had a really fat Lucian who was, like, not pressuring as much as he should, I believe, and they were just not playing around him, so we just took it off and we started actually pressuring ourselves. I think uh, Fnatic definitely could have pressured us a lot more. I've uh, rewatched it four or five times. I think after that early game, they should be able to snowball onto us. Uh, they were respecting uh, us a bit too much, even though when they have prior on almost uh, every lane, uh, it's, our only play was pretty much we have to engage. Uh, later when we, uh, like first we gave up the Elder Dragon, which was really stupid because Yorick kind of one-shots it. And then we stole it. And when we stole it, we should be able to just set up Nasher and end the game. But yeah. uh, we went for the Vitality Classic, and uh, <laughs> that record wasn't spinning on that A. So it was pretty sad. But I think uh, uh, we did something that is very hard right now, and that is to come back. Yeah. We managed to come back, and usually when teams are behind, they lose. And we found a lot of ways to claw uh, ourselves back in. So I'm happy about that, at least. Yeah, so <laughs> when you look at this game as a coach, um, what do you focus on in terms of what you can learn and take away? Because obviously, like, there's problems in the early game, but then you came back, and then there's maybe some decision-making questions in the late game. Like, what do you do, what do you take away from a game that is this chaotic, that is this back and forth? Like, is there anything actually you want? You're like, how do you? What do you focus on when you're like, all right, guys, this is what we learned. What did you <laughs> learn from the Fnatic game? Because it was so much going on. I was um, there's there's a lot. You know, luckily now, well, not luckily, it's. Uh, uh, two sides of a coin. We only have two games a week, so you can you have a chance to take as much as possible from a game. You don't have to like pick and choose, because this game there was a lot, a lot, a lot. There was uh, the early game. There was disastrous. There was uh, some uh, very hardcore late game decisions that uh, you can always fine tune because it's very rare that you find yourself uh, in those situations, and uh, it's good to uh, learn from them as much as possible. And then uh, in terms of how we had to play out our composition, there were some mistakes we did there too. And then just general team fighting. It was kind of a game with mistakes in every department. So uh, that usually happens when there's a very long game. And uh, uh, from the learning side, I am a happy coach. But from the results side, obviously, it could have been better. 
Yeah, never ideal to lose to a Fnatic, who is now starting to do a little bit better. Um, Attila, when you look at that Fnatic lineup, um, why why do you think they're improving now as opposed to struggling early in the split? Like, what do you think has changed for them that they can actually? I, I'm just gonna say do something because like the first the first four weeks were were pretty tragic for Fnatic. Obviously, it's started to turn around now. What what has changed for this lineup from from your perspective, from an outside perspective, that has like let them start to to show up a little bit more now? I mean, I think the meta Swift as well. Uh, before, like the AD carries were not as uh, the fanatic uh, likes, right? They were not like the the typical fanatic AD carries that you could actually just play and rely on. And as well, like it's just like these videos that they always do, and in the interviews that they always do, and they are like saying that they liked an identity, and that's about it, right? Like fanatic were just bending over and hoping for the best, and if you do that, then you're most likely not gonna win any game at all, and. If you're just playing on the back foot every single step of the game, then you're actually just gonna lose, even if you if you have good players or even if you have like a strong draft or whatever. So I think that's basically what happened to, to Fnatic, and as well, I think like some teams started off with a really basic solids. Like for example, I think Schalke started really good. I think SK actually started really good, and like other teams, like for example, us that. Uh, kept like the roster from the last year with four players. I think we are also started pretty good, so they just kind of fell apart in that department, and they're, now they are just standing by. Yeah. So now, now working better <coughs> together, obviously rising up in the standings and the playoff race is, is getting closer than ever. Um, you can see behind you. There's a lot of, and you mentioned it earlier until before we even lie. There's a lot of teams at six and six. There's a lot of people who could make it into this playoff race. Uh, unfortunately for Excel and Rogue, it doesn't look like it's either of them, but everyone else. Definitely very close in this playoff race. Eight teams that could potentially make it. Um, but focusing in on you guys, who I think are, is going to be our primary talking point today, your team, uh, still in second. Now, one win, you guys had a bit more of a buffer in weeks past, uh, but it's obviously getting tighter and tighter as we get later into the split. Uh, what is, until when you look at this team compared to the previous editions of, of Vitality, whether it be uh, last split or just last year as a whole, um, how do you feel right now about the team strength and the team's potential? Is this are you feeling really co- optimistic? Like, is this the split where you guys are contending for number one? If not number one, are you uncertain heading into best of fives? How do you feel? I mean, I think the the team didn't change that much. Like, we kept four out of the five players that we played throughout the whole last year, and we just changed jungle once again. And honestly, yeah, I feel really good about the roster. Like, there's a reason that, as well, like all the roster get right. Like Jack Troll and Kavashard last year, they 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 renewed the contract as well as Yamato. And if everyone renewed this because we believe in this project, then I think we're more than capable of actually taking the trophy to home. Like, I think the the team is just like this kind of team that can actually play you a lot of styles. I think we're really versatile. We're not close-minded that we can only play one side of the coin. We can all always like try to innovate. We backdoor you one game, which is stall 40 minutes and play for the vein six items, win condition. You know, like we have more than one <laughs> one way of winning the game. <laughs> um, yeah, that vein game was something. That was yeah. you play for. I'm gonna say that you play. You obviously play fantastically in those late game team fights as vein, but also they literally just ran tanks into you, and you're like, oh, I'm a vein. There's no damage threat here. I will kill literally everyone. Yeah, it was it was a rough game actually. You know, like <laughs> they give me vein last week, and I'm like, all right, I just need to chill, and then I get hit by Bronchio, and I'm like, oh no, this is not <laughs> happening. This is not happening. You know, and I die, and then. Tim is like asking, hey guys, uh, what's our win condition? And I'm like, just let me scale, dude. Oh, God, this is the worst <laughs> feeling in the world. Just, just wait, just wait another, another 10, 15, 25 minutes, yeah. two items, three items, six items on vein, whatever it takes. Um, well, obviously, like that spark is still there. And, obviously, and people really love those games where you guys are able to clutch it out and it's a crazy backdoor. It's one deciding team fight. Yamato, from your perspective, I, I feel like it's good that your team has this, but how do you feel about those games where, where it does come down to like one clutch, crazy decision? Um, versus the games where it is just like you guys dominating from minute one and ending the game at 20 minutes. I think right now the game is um, very snowbally. Like you get some plates and uh, you're in a position to kind of dominate the game for the for the remainder of the time. Uh, and uh, I think it's important to be sharp and find those opportunities and find those moments. Even in the, in the game against Fnatic, we found our engages, even though we were uh, pretty far behind. We didn't have prior anywhere. and. Uh, uh, maybe we could do something with Tam, but uh, the the main thing there is that we looked for those opportunities. Even when 
uh, you know, when things uh, look grim and the door is closed, we kind of take a ha hatchet and just find a way to look in, you know, here's Johnny or something, you know. <laughs> so uh, on our end, uh, when we find those opportunities, it's because we are always, always looking. And I think uh, that's the way you have to play the game. You need to look for those opportunities. And uh, I think as a team, we do that uh, uh, very well. Uh, but to add to Atila's point about what is... Uh, um, like my main philosophy in building a roster is that um, I never want to have a roster where I feel like we've peaked. And I think with the, with the previous alterations, always, always, I feel like I re we reached a point where we peaked as a team. And uh, uh, you need to make dynamic changes so everyone can improve. And uh, this has been my mindset uh, as to why we've uh, made changes. Uh, Mowgli... Uh, has a very a good eye for the game, has a lot of game knowledge, comes from a background where, uh, you know, in Africa, surrounded by fantastic players, uh, fantastic coaching staff. He knows what he's doing and he's taught us a lot of things and he learns very, very fast. And I feel once again that uh, uh, we've not uh, reached our peak. And I think uh, this is the mindset that uh, I think a lot of people share. I think um, my understanding as to why Caps left Fnatic was that he felt like Fnatic, that alteration peaked coming uh, second place at the World Championship and he wants more. And I think uh, uh, this is what drives a lot of my decisions too. I want more than what we accomplished last year. I want to uh, do better than to uh, go 3-3 uh, three, three in groups. I want to go further, quarters or semis. And this is uh, the purpose of this roster. That's inspiring. We could also hope for a slightly better group draw for you guys yeah. if you do make world. So you guys obviously did fantastic in that group. That <laughs> um, was the best year that the West has ever had in the in the quote unquote group of death, but still definitely a rough draw. Um, and that constant kind of drive for improvement, I think, is super respectable. Um, but one thing that seems to be always, at least from a broadcast perspective, what we talk about when we bring up your team is consistency, and it's like finding that because in the games where you look good, obviously you look fantastic, and there are the games where you have crazy comebacks where it's you win, right? And that like that ultimately is the important part and maybe there are some mistakes in the early game but it comes together and then there are some games where it really does um, feel like a struggle and a lot of times I think we look at uh, look at the top side of the map right now as like two really strong points in Jazuke and Cabo and Attila, you have your games where you pop off but you and Jack Troll also really have the games where you struggle so I'm curious from your perspective um, why is it that we don't get to see like the, the, the version of you that you showed versus Schalke, let's say, where you're popping off, where you're killing everybody. Like, why don't we get to see that every game uh, on the LEC stage? Um, I mean, the other teams don't trash talk as much, so I don't have the <laughs> urge to pop off. But on a more serious note is uh, basically because um, I feel like we had some off games that, for example, were clearly like just playing for late. Like mm. but bottom line side, for example, when I'm playing Ezreal against Lucian, you know, you, you don't really aim to win the lane against yeah. against Lucian. Like he has the upper pressure and he's the one kind of controlling what is happening in bot lane or not. And I think I played like four times against Lucian this split so mm. far. So normally, you know, like we're giving some to get some. And basically, like in this split, we're kind of like in this role, like people uh, people are permabanning driven. Otherwise, like I think I will look way more dominant than I am right now. There's no Caitlyn, there's uh, Lucian is always almost permaban. So, you know, like you don't really have like this really strong dominant lens anymore on bot lane, at least I feel like. And basically, um, we had some off games. <laughs> Yeah. I agree on that one, like, I don't know, against Splice, it happened to me twice, the same thing, I die 2v2, then <laughs> I get ganked, then I die again, and I'm like, oh no, <laughs> but the second game it was easier, and it's just uh, maybe some early mistakes, you know, like, I don't know, like, sometimes you play lane that if you do early mistake, the enemy AD comes back with a big sword, you know, you have like a, a dagger, and then you're like, all right, guys, like, Let's just leave both them as it is and just get an advantage on the solo lanes. And, you know, it, it is what it is. And if we have, like, to play, like, for example, if I have to play against Lucian all the time, having Ezreal and, or something like this, you know, that is not the best matchup ever in order to actually get the best draft ever. I'm happy with it. Like, we're second place for a reason as well, right? So Yeah, and I mean, I think when people look at... Um look at you as a player, obviously with the personality and all the trash talk. They, they Like, you are the guy that people associate with Raven, right? Like, you are <laughs> yeah. the guy that they associate with these super aggressive carries. And so, 
I think it is important to point out that, you know, you're not always necessarily like given a lane where you can pop off. Um, and obviously it, it does benefit the rest of your map. Cabo, very, Cabo and Mowgli obviously getting a lot of the, the last picks to make sure that they set themselves up for success. Uh, and Yamato, in your eyes, looking like the meta right now, is this a kind of just a meta where you feel like bot lane just cannot be your biggest priority when these things like Draven and Lucian are, are banned away? Because it's, it's tricky because uh, a lot of the supports that are really OP right now are uh, supports that uh, don't mind just getting into the game. You know, you play your Braum, your Tomkins, your Allies. Uh, I guess Galio is a, a more uh, aggressive option. But it always comes down to uh, what decision you make in draft. I don't think necessarily we um, we uh, have committed to something specific. It's just that the the top lane matchups right now that everyone plays, uh, they are very delicate. You play Jace, you get ganked once, and you just a useless dog for the rest of the game. Same thing with Jarvan. Uh, Yorick is a newcomer. Urgot is something sure. He's more in the tank role. Sion as well, but uh, this is not something that we uh, play too much. I think it just comes from the delicacy of uh, the top laners. It was the same at the World Championship when you, people played Victor. Like you gank this thing once, it falls behind, and it's just not a champion anymore. And I think uh, uh, a lot of it stems from that. Uh, but to speak to uh, like the consistency of uh, vitality, uh, our philosophy on how to play the game is um, uh, plain and simple. I think the best way to play the game is that uh, you try to get as much as possible out of your champion uh, at all times. And that means you're playing on edge, it's going to be right there, you look the mistake right in the eye. And uh, when you do that, you basically strive for perfection. I think. Uh, uh, that is where uh, people say, oh, we're early game, we gamble. But uh, I think it comes down to just us trying to play uh, at a level that we aspire for. It comes from our practice, it comes from our stage games, and it comes from our confidence. And I think uh, a lot of these games where we are winning because of people say random things, it's just that uh, the game is very snowbally, the meta is very snowbally, and we are just looking for the opportunities. We are very uh, cerebral about uh, our position in the game. We're not going to be delusional. Oh, we're ahead. We're going to keep fighting and we're going to uh, do well. It's a very, very calculated decision at most times. We want to fight at this timer. We want to engage here. We want to uh, look for this. We want to split push. And that is how we win games because we commit to it and we uh, do it well. So I think uh, in a lot of games when we fell behind, we found ways to get back into the game because we, we see the way to get back into the game. It's not something that just happens randomly. So uh, I think that kind of concept and that idea has come up a lot more this season than it did in the past. It feels like this was last year towards the end, and especially actually with the introduction of Vitality and with the Caps version of Fnatic, people were a lot more willing to drop the idea of like the perfect Korean macro game and a lot more willing to do this thing. Uh, I think G2 called it playing limits. I'll just stick with that uh, vernacular because it's easy. But yeah. like push, pushing yourself, like looking for these mechanical plays, trying to push your champions to the limits. You guys were obviously pretty big adopters of that uh, last season with, you know, Jazuke, Bryze, 3D1 on a, on a sideline, right? Like going for those big <laughs> plays. Um, and, it's, and it's interesting to hear, but I, I'm curious, like, is there a point where when it comes time, and let's say that there's like one or two games left in the season, and you know that if you win these two games, you get second place, you get that bye, but if you lose these two games, you're out. Like, do you take a step back? Do you play for more defensive or safe comps? Or are you guys like 100% committed to this idea of playing, playing on the edge, playing to the limits every time and trying to perfect that exact style? I think it uh, stems in, uh, in how our mindset is in-game, but I think our drafting... Uh, heavily changes depending on who we face. Mm. I think we adjust ourselves uh, towards the enemy. Some enemies are slower, some enemies are faster, some enemies have very obvious weaknesses, and uh, that's where we adjust the strategy. And uh, of course, there's a time and place for risk. If you're ahead in the game, there's no reason to take uh, a fight that might have a slight chance of going wrong, and then you throw the game. Uh, it's more about when you are sitting there in the early game, it's better to be the one taking the decision first. Making the defensive play, making the reactionary play is uh, most of the time going to be worse unless the one that makes the proactive play uh, makes a big mistake. So I want to be the one pointing the gun at the enemy, not the opposite way. Uh, and uh, I think uh, we adjust ourselves depending on uh, the enemy. Yeah, and I think it, it feels like a good time for that strategy too. Uh, Bupo talked about it last week and you guys are hiding on it too, but just 
coming back feels really hard, right? Because tower tower plates are insane. It's a, it's a <laughs> lot of gold to put in someone's pocket. From your perspective in the bot lane, um, in your experience playing across this season, Attila, um, does it, like when you have these games where you do make these miracle comebacks, does it feel like it should be impossible when you guys find a way to get it back? Because pretty much every pro player I'm talking to is like, this, if you get a, uh, a deficit in the early game, there's there's pretty much no way. You're pretty much done. The game's pretty much over. I mean, we're the public Picasso of LEC. I think we're really creative. <laughs> <laughs> so for us, there's always a way, right? Like, for example, I don't know, Rogue just gets a Baron. They're pushing. They they completely ignore bot lane. We have double TP. All right, boys, it's time. <laughs> so, you know, like, basically, there's I believe there's always a lot of ways of ending the games and... I think like in the past, uh, when we were doing bad, we were really getting criticized for that because we always try for like this, you know, we always strive to, oh, we can end the game right now, right here, if we do this and we just do it. And sometimes it goes well, right? Like for example, against Fnatic, when we time can shoot and we just try to cancel five mental uh, yeah. bugs and all this stuff. But I think that's that's a really good way of playing the game, right? If it kills the Nexus, it kills it and that's what it counts. So. Yeah. Uh, hey, I'm not here to judge. Plus, the, the <laughs> spectators love it. So as far as I'm concerned, every game could end like that. Actually, probably one in ten games should end like that. I feel like people get really upset if every single game ended via a backdoor. Uh, the, the other thing that was interesting to me is that it seems like one of the things that you guys really strive for in the last few weeks, uh, actually not last week, but the week, two weeks before that, um, was this like very high pressure in the lane styles. Like these very huge winning lane matchups, at least in top and mid, and just letting Mowgli play Olaf and just go in the enemy jungle. Hmm. I'm curious if that was like, uh, if this is like an opponent specific thing where you're like trying to shut down, you're just trying to let Mowgli shut down, or if this is you guys trying to set Mowgli up to play a style that he's comfortable with, because it was, it was very explosive to watch. Obviously the Rogue game is a good example where Kick is probably shouldn't have gotten to play League of Legends at all, made yeah. some good ganks to come back in the game, but very much was down, I think, 30, 40 CS in the jungle, which yeah. is insane. Obviously 10 camps is a massive deficit. Was this a conscious choice, uh, uh, Yamato, to set Mowgli up to play that way, or was this more like this was the strategy that made sense against that team? I think um, if the enemy allows you to, and you can draft three lanes that can push, and you can draft a jungler that wins against the enemy jungler 1v1, then uh, for me that feels uh, pretty straightforward because it means that you're going to push, you're going to fight for the plates, you're going to have prior, you can do anything that you want. And uh, that's kind of what um, uh, Rogue gave us that game. And then we made some blunders. We tried to do a TP play into top, try a 2v2 that just went to sh and all of a sudden we got snowballed on because like, we had a lot of delicate matchups. As I said, the Jace, Ryzen and Dakali is very delicate as well. Uh, and we got punished for those mistakes, but we came back somehow. Uh, I think um, right now with the turret plates and the focus on early game in general uh, if you can draft three pushing lanes and a winning jungler then you should do so <laughs> i mean generally it feels like i feel like it never i very rarely see it i tried yeah. to avoid talking about the bot lane in that one circumstance because sometimes uh attila is always feels like you might be the sacrificial lamb and sometimes when it's yeah. <laughs> setting up those lanes for individual success but but yeah that game was kind of an oddity i think but the, the most extreme example of this like very high lane pressure. Mowgli lives in the enemy jungle kind of style that you guys have been busting out. Um, now, when you look at yourselves in terms of the league overall, we do want to talk about power rankings today. I, I'm curious where you see yourself. Obviously, G2 is kind of the big bad wolf right now, and there's all these other names that people might put above or below you. Um, where do you see yourself in the league? I'll go to you first, Attila. Yamada's, I'm sure I got a lot of things to say about this one, but do you feel like it's as clear cut as you guys are just second place and that's just the way it's going to be. Do you feel like you are the team that can take down G2? Where do you see yourself? I mean, right now as it stands, I think we're second place team. Like, I believe strongly that we're going to finish second place mainly because we also drop a lot of games like that we shouldn't. For example, the just yes, uh, the Fnatic game, <laughs> we shouldn't have dropped that one. And basically, I think by the end of the split, we'll be the best con contenders to actually win G2 on the finals. I think that's how I see my, uh, myself and our team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yamana, agree? Full, <laughs> full steam ahead to the yep. final. Second place, obviously, doesn't guarantee you a spot in the final, but potentially two best of fives to, to beat G2. Yeah. Fun. Exciting. That makes me happy. I think... Uh, a lot of the other teams, like people speak to us about inconsistency, but what the hell is Schalke doing? What is OG doing? 
what his miss was doing. That is the epitome of inconsistency. Zero two weeks that look where they look completely shattered and then they come back. And I think uh, that's where the inconsistencies lie. We are second place and we are happy to be so. And uh, I think uh, inconsistency is a word that you can attribute to the other teams. I will say that. But in defense of the broadcast team, Misfits, to be fair, fell off a cliff and then started to come back up. <laughs> yes. You guys are like... This game looks insane. The next day, what's going on? That, that's where our definition of inconsistency <laughs> like, okay. comes from. Because I agree that there has been a lot of uh, there are teams that have just fallen off completely yeah. for weeks at a time. I maybe calling it slumping. I don't know. Maybe we need better words. Maybe that's the lesson we learned from it. Um, as we kind of build out this tier list, as we kind of look to talk about the other teams, is there anyone that stands out to you that you that you're really passionate about that you really want to start with? Because otherwise, I'll just start. I'll start naming teams, and we can do it that way. It's uh, it's weird. Because putting who's third is so difficult. Like in case of overall potential of what they could be, mm. for me the obvious one is putting OG third. Yeah. But then they have these games where they look like shit. Like I remember them losing against Misfits, and I think maybe Missy Missy Tomkins is cursed because he just keeps dying over and over. <laughs> and then cursed. OG against Fnatic, it looked like a disaster. And then uh, you know OG coming into that week, they just beat G two and. Uh, and Schalke, so they look good. I think the potential for OG to be uh, the third place and to be a contender in playoffs is uh, is there. So I feel like putting them third because of it. Attil, how do you feel about the Patrick Mithy bot lane on that OG lineup? Where do you think that they rank in, in like, not necessarily like a hard stack ranking of power rankings for bot lane, but do you feel like they're a top three, a top five bot lane? I mean, it's weird, right? Because when we played them, they had like, Again, Lucian. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I was on Ezreal duty on that game, and basically uh, we went kind of even online, like we just farm for late game. Meanwhile, Kabushard and Chizuka are fighting top side 24 7. Like, I think we got gank once, but that's about it, you know. But I think they are good players. I think it's a good bot lane, solid, but uh, I don't really like see OG playing for bot lane either, mm. so. So who do you think it's like, if, if you're setting anyone up on that team for success, do you think it's automatically you just go to Nuke Duck every time now after that Zed game? I mean, mid lane is really strong lane, no? Like, you have a map that is a square, and then you have a lane that is in the middle of that square. Like, I don't know what, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, right? Like, yeah, you're I in mean, the middle of everything. At the, so. at the end of the day, yeah. I was curious if Nuke Duck was like an extra special mid laner. Yeah, at the end of the day, you are right. Uh, it's the year of the duck. The year of the duck, one more time. Uh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> People were tired of hearing it. Yamada, you had your chance for Year of the Duck. Your year he played Malzahar. That was a struggle. That year was a this struggle. Last well, time you had a new deck on your uh, roster. Actually, he came back. I had him for one split, and everyone was like, oh, Nuke Duck is resurging. So, Oh, that uh, was right, because he played a bunch of Rai, uh, Corky, Rise games. Corky, Kogma, Corky games. Rise. He did good. I think a- a- any time I've worked with Nuke Duck, he's been performing. Even nice. when they went from, we took, we went from relegations to almost beating OG in the regional qualifier, we went to five games, and Nuktag was performing very well that split. So whenever I've been with Nuktag, we've had a good chemistry and a good relationship, so I'm proud to say that. I'm jealous. Bless the duck. <laughs> we do too, man. <laughs> we do too. He's going to do special stuff for your birthday. Wait to see the special stuff before you get I've been playing get... this game for nine years, you know. I've <laughs> yeah. worked with other people. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You, you need to be a one-team kind of man now, Yamada. You can't talk about <laughs> the people that came before, the exes, dirty laundry. Um, all right, so that's the top of the table. I want to hit more in this like crazy 18 playoff race, but I do also think that we need to talk about the bottom or what I would expect to be the bottom. Once again, we're going to rank all the teams at the end for now. We're just talking about them mm-hmm. just so that we don't get uh, caught up in the debacle of who's fifth and sixth before we even talk about the fifth-place team. Let's talk about XL Esports and Rogue. Now, uh, we got to talk about it a little bit. We got. I got to talk about where they are, and this is why we're doing them first. Is because uh, sadly they're they're not really in the playoff race. So I think that as far as team people would much rather hear us go for twenty minutes about one of the contentious rankings than the bottom yeah. two. So let's start with uh, Rogue. Thoughts, opinions. What's going right? What's going wrong? I mean, I think Rogue and Excel are my motivation. I yes. never want to be there, so they motivate <laughs> me a lot to be better. We're gonna call that a compliment. It was a little bit of trash talk too, but I think that's like the cl- that's a it's a, a Attila compliment. All right, they're motivating, they're inspiring. That's what I hear. It's a it's a rough spot to be in. You yeah. know, I I can I can understand. You know, it's, it's it's rough. I don't want to bash on them. I think uh, uh, Rogue think it's a wise decision to make some changes. Excel is trying something too because to be honest, their split is kind of doomed. 
I think it's all about just gathering the experience and gathering the information so you can prepare as uh, well as possible for the next split. I think it's okay to uh, part ways with spring split for these two teams. I think uh, uh, Rogue is looking better. I think Excel with their changes are looking worse. But I think a lot of their players just don't look like they are on caliber, on the caliber to compete with the rest of the league. And that's fine sometimes. Maybe you give it some time. I don't know what the coaching staff is doing. Uh, I just, um, right now, the projects uh, are not working out. It's very kind. I like that you don't want to bash yeah. on them. I was kind of hoping it's, you it's would. It's really unfair, you know. The, yeah. What is there to gain for me to bash a team that is last place? You know? That's true. That was, we got that right on the, on the original tier list. We really did. <laughs> which is a sad truth. Excel, I mean, I think Excel showed a lot of promise in those, those first few weeks where they, quote unquote, almost beat you two before Caps did yeah. Caps things. Um, <laughs> and Rogue obviously kind of look like they're finally starting to get their stuff together, but it does feel like two teams that are kind of doomed to the bottom of the standings. Maybe they can make some upsets. Do you think that there's, in the weeks to come, that they can mess up someone's playoff runs? Is there at least hope for that? Like, do you think these teams are clearly worse than everyone around them? Or are you, have you been inspired by the Kickass Pantheon? Or are you, like, willing to believe that these guys can definitely tank someone else's playoff run? I mean, they have some good players, right? Like, for example, Rock, they have Kikis, and Kikis was in world the World Championship with us, right, last year. So it's not like he's a bad player at all. But I just think that the, these rosters, you see them on paper, and, you know, like, you're like, okay, they, they're decent players, but then you see the other rosters, and you buy it, right? Like, you see the Misfits roster, for example, yeah. in the start of the split, and you're like, oh, super team, until they fall off the cliff. But I did say that. You're right. Yeah. I did call them a super team. Well, a lot of us yeah, did. I, I think I think Rock can, can actually surprise the mid-tier teams, like, because right now they're really motivated, and mm. even though it's a rough spot to be in, I think they, they've been playing pretty decent uh, compared to what they, what they did, like, the first weeks, and... Who knows, right? Like uh, against us, I was like zero four zero, and I was like teleporting on their base, and I'm like, can't believe I'm winning this game. But if <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is it counts. That doesn't matter. Yeah, it, yeah. it counted. That was so. definitely yeah. That was a heartbreaker for Rogue. Yeah, I think Excel they breed no fear. I think it's very hard to lose against Excel right now. I think um, like yeah, I, I just think there's no no factor there at all that can pop off. I think it's just think uh, they just have uh, very very weak players I think some of the regional leagues uh, have better teams and uh, I think Rogue, Kikis, Vander you know they've shown in history they can do great things they can drop a pantheon on your head uh, so there's some fear there, there you know so uh, Rogue can definitely uh, cause some mix-ups. Yeah the nail in the, the coffin for me for Excel was when they were playing Rogue and they're like this is the game we need to bring out our really weird counter pick and I was like <laughs> you're really only like because that to me felt like cheese because that champion is not that champion's jungle clear is abysmal the Urgot jungle and if you're drafting <laughs> like you're the worst team in that matchup then I just feel like you're over I feel like the season is is kind of done for you but Obviously, they have the 10-man roster. They've got big ambitions. Maybe we see more improvement for them as we go further in. Now we get into the the top eight. We guys have, we've already talked about you a little bit. Um, one team that I want to get your opinion on is Splice. This is a team that is currently uh, tied for third with Schalke. Um, if you put the FC in front of Schalke, they technically come above them. If you don't, then Splice comes first. No, that's not how I ask. Phil? Our producer has put them in the wrong order alphabetically. I was trying to make an alphabetical order order, order joke, but we're doomed. All right, never mind. That was all I had for Splice. So now you guys are going to have to back me. I'm talking about Splice. Where do you think they are? This is, Every time I think that this team is going to do something insane, it feels like they fall back on bad habits. But I, I say that, but it's like bad habits from rosters of years past. It feels like they are so consistently the same team across all these different editions. I want to know how you guys feel about it. Attila, let's start with you. What, what do you think about this team? How do you feel about Splice overall? I mean, my opinion is going to be pretty mint, I think, because both games I started 0-2 uh, against them, and we ended up winning, right? But I think if I put a blindfold and I see the playoffs team's potential, I think Splice coming into the playoffs teams, I think they are probably the weaker team because I feel like this team does really, really little on the early game and then mid game they struggle so much at doing decisive plays and every single time I see Splice winning, I'm lying down on my chair, I'm like, oh no, another 40 minutes game, you know, like, so it's kind of always the same with Splice, like they have good players, I just don't see them like having like this guy that is actually going to lead them to actually 
have like this decisiveness that it's going to win you like a best of five, for example? Mm. I think my metaphor for splice would be, you know, when you want to sneak outside and your parents are asleep and uh, you, you try to sneak outside and you're trying to like sneak in the corridor, make sure you don't walk on that creek that makes that noise. Yeah, oh, right? yeah. 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 For sure. Avoid and that then, one stair. And then you hear a noise and you just run back into your bed. You know, them sneaking out is them trying to do something proactive, you know? And I, I can see Splice, they're trying. They're trying to branch but out. But it's they're a trying real to get creaky better. floor, Yamato. Yeah, a really, really <laughs> creaky floor. And they just instantly <laughs> run back to that safety of their bed. Uh, 40 minutes, you know? And uh, uh, I can respect that they're trying. But uh, right now, the pace uh, that they are uh, pushing uh, uh, themselves in is uh, uh, not fast enough to keep up with the rest of the team. I think uh, they are looking... Uh, uh, pretty decent with their score. Uh, what is it, 7-5? Seven, five. Seven, five. I think that's going to be very helpful coming uh, into the next days. But I think um, uh, playing against them, I never really feel uh, like we're pressured at all. I feel, I feel like our games versus Splice are pretty uh, straightforward. I think the last uh, showing we had against them was um, uh, we had a fantastic game and uh, it wasn't. Uh, it was very loose. We didn't feel like uh, we were pressured. Hmm. Now, uh, you brought up the kind of the on paper aspect for Excel and also for Rogue, uh, Attila. So I'm curious, because to me, all, everything we're talking about really feels like like team issues and not individual player issues. Do you, do you think these are like, in theory, if you take the team play issues out, if you just looked at this roster on paper coming to the split, that you would that you would think that this was a, a pretty solid team? I think they have some pretty solid uh, players, yeah. Like they have players that have been going around like for actually a pretty decent time. Like they have... Uh, Coven, that he's already been in a world championship with this man right here, right? And they have uh, Norskaren that did a pretty decent year last year, like, considering like the team that he was in, like, yeah. and like, you know, like, okay, they got a rookie mid laner on, and it's, you know, maybe it's a rough spot to be in in Europe. Like, you have really good mid laners, like, for example, Jizuke, you have Caps and all these players. But I think, yeah, they, they're they pretty solid, like, player wise, but as well, like you, you need a leader, right? Like you need a decisiveness. You need to pull the trigger instead of just waiting for the other team to actually make mistake. So I think that's what really likes on them. Yeah, it's a shame to see too, because I think that I don't know. It's hard. Spice feel like the last holdover of the era of beautiful macro game, where they like want their team to play like this perfect game. But the reality is, is that well, they quite do the opposite all the time, no? Yeah. I, I remember, like, I remember reviewing their games last year. Like, they have a very different roster now, but it was like, yeah, they should be pushing the turret here. They don't. They're basing. They should be uh, taking our jungle here. They don't. They're basing. They're always basing. They have a chance to make an aggressive move to, like, steal the queen from the enemy on the chessboard, but they're like, nah, next time. Next time. We'll get them. Next time you'll be a little bit more overextended. <laughs> the opportunity may present itself yeah. again. Sad to see. Uh, and the 40 minutes meme is, I think that they're at 39 minute average game time. All right, Mr. Man. So let's let's calm down a little bit. They've gotten a minute better. Um, but obviously a bit of a tough spot right now. Maybe their record will keep them afloat. But obviously the teams below them are starting to catch up. And one of those teams is Misfits Gaming, who are now back to 6-6. Six and six. The Moose has returned and suddenly everything is better. Maybe not everything. But from an outside perspective, obviously it's a huge change. I'm curious, um, when you guys look back at the Misfits games over this last week, with Moose on stage versus um, potentially any other differences. Who knows if they also had a good week in scrims. Do you see a difference between Misfits of, you know, a few weeks ago where they're losing every game and this Misfits that came on stage this week? I mean, I think they're still the same, no? They they just won bottling again. Like, I, I see the OG game and I see a solo kill on, on the Kaiser lane and then I see them just having... Ivern, Oriana, and shielding the Kaiser for 3k shield, and the Kaiser is just there, popping off a lot of damage into into the enemies. So I think they are just same misfits, but they just played well accordingly to their win condition, which is put Hansama ahead. Yeah, I feel like this is the same misfits that we've been seeing for a very long time, but I think uh, misfits try to be, they try to be like Vitality or G2 in the sense that they can they try to play, like they try to draft in a way where they are ready to play any type of style. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, Misfits is just not ready to do so. I think uh, from an outside perspective, what it looks like, what Hussein brought to the table is, um, 
just an idea that they can rally behind and uh, that's something that uh, they needed. They just lacked identity for the past weeks after they they started with them losing against us and then it just kind of went downhill. And um, I think uh, uh, the lack of identity was the biggest issue. Uh, I don't know how long it would last because I think uh, everyone sees this pattern of play and it can be uh, punished. But uh, it's working so far. I think it's the best way for them to pick up wins and reach playoffs and then maybe solve some issues. Is this a team that you feel threatened by if you if you come up against them? Well, you are coming up against them this week. Um, is this a team like, because you obviously talked about Excel, but it's like no threat, Splice, you felt like it was a pretty comfortable game. Is Misfits a team where you're a little bit nervous or do you feel like because this play through bot strategy is is kind of so obvious to an outside perspective that that you should should just be able to take this one comfortably. Oh, it's uh, there's a lot more depth to it, you know, and I don't want to reveal too much. But uh, I think uh, preparing against misfits is definitely uh, much much easier than preparing against, for example, OG or uh, G two. So I think, um, uh, but that that's the case for any other team in yeah. the LEC. I think preparing against any other team is uh, uh, super easy in comparison to G two and uh, OG. We'll save those guys for last. Um, we'll move into. Another team that's doing, I think, better than a lot of people expected, which is uh, SK Gaming. Now, Attila, when we talked earlier, you kind of you matched them up with Schalke in the way that you were saying, like, this is a team that kind of hit the ground running, that was just stronger and more coordinated than other people at the start. Um, but they did kind of dip out, and now they're rising back up. Um, are you surprised that they're actually doing as well as they're doing, that they're actually taking wins off these top teams? I mean, I think when I went to PGL third week or fourth week, I said that SK will be on playoffs. Yeah. And I think a lot of people were surprised about that, that. But I actually see, you know, like I see good players. I see a strong idea and identity on them, and I see them like pulling the trigger a lot. And like sometimes they do really bad stuff, but at least they are they are trying to do so, right? So I think like in the long run, you actually have an edge if you're actually this kind of teams that actually go for it, and you're not afraid of doing so. And I think like they were just really as well uh, underrated by the public and just by looking at the rosters without like knowing how the players will match or how how the players are playing individually wise and I think they are doing pretty decent so has it solved? I think uh, sorry no yeah, yeah it was just oh. just <laughs> go I was like you look like you were ready to say something yeah, yeah. I um I spaced out and I was like what did he say <laughs> uh, okay. I was saying um I think uh there's Two brackets I put players in, and I think uh, the SK Gaming players, they have some so-called rookies. I, I call Dreams a rookie as well, like he was playing on Mysterious <laughs> Monkeys, but you know everyone wants to forget that. Uh, and uh, I, I see these players, and these are players that are going to be in the league, they're going to be in the pro scene for minimum three more years. It's just these, they are the, the level of players that are going to consistently improve, and they're going to be kind of indoctrin indoctrinated into, how do I say that? I don't have to use complicated words. It was a big mistake. But uh, <laughs> I think they're going to be a part of the league because I think uh, they are improving. They're understanding their matchups. They're not players that are kind of just falling over like some of the Excel players. Uh, I'm super impressed by Pyrian. I uh, uh, thought less of him before the split, and I think he has showed up big time, and it's a mid laner that goes under the radar a lot. For sure, I think when people look at that team, they often it's pretty much just the self-made show, and then yeah, sometimes yeah. dreams making plays. But Pyrian obviously had some really good games, uh, excellent Oriana game, a couple of good Cinder games as well. Um, comfortably in playoffs, Attila, you said you already said week four PGL. Do you think this is a team that is just five six spot? Do you think they can push for that fourth place spot? Um, well, that's a tricky question, right? It depends a little bit on who they get matched against. Mm. I believe, like for example, I think if SK Splice get matched against, I think SK will win. The best of five, for example. But for example, if I think if you put me SK Origin, my bets are on Origin, right? So yeah. I think they'll do good. And depending on which team they are going to face, like on the quarterfinals, I think they will maybe surprise or not. But that's my bet on it. All right. Well, the last team to dive a little bit more uh, deeply into, well, there's a few more. We have Fnatic remaining. We have Schalke. We have G2. And we can talk a little bit more. We already hit Origin. We'll get the board up for that one. <laughs> Good. Let's talk about Schalke. Oh. And the second I say the word <laughs> Schalke, everyone at home is like, say something mean. Say something mean. That's like what they want from you, but you don't have to say anything mean. You did. You gave him, you gave him the shh. You had your moment. Oh, I, I don't kick someone who's down, so. There you go. 
I like it because it's subtle flame. You're just bringing it, bringing it back. <laughs> well, what can I just, what can I say, right? So the Schalke lineup, we talked about uh, some of their, their issues earlier, and you said this is a team that hit the ground running that kind of looks like they're going to start to fall, but they're still in a third-place position similar to Splice. So does, does it feel like um, this team is pretty much guaranteed for playoffs at this point if they just keep playing the way that they've been playing this season? Yeah, I think they'll surely make playoffs. Like, they, they just have a really good record. Like Splice, for example, I think they just won too much. They just need a couple more wins and they're secured on it. I think they will be um, they'll be decent. I think they'll be decent. Like, they have good players. Like, I think their bot line is pretty solid despite all the trash talk. Like, you know, like, when I win against them, I feel good because first, he trash talks me, so... You know, you're going to get pounded for that. <laughs> and second one is because they're actually good players as well, right? So, because I, I don't really feel like good winning against Excel. I don't consider them like a good team. So, there's not much props for that. But if you win, for example, against a team that is doing good, then th that's when you feel good, actually. And I think like their bottling is solid. I think their jungle memento, like he had some off games, like mm. I tune in to private games and then I see him stop watching when the Nocturne is insulting. And then I'm like, oopsie. But, you know, like, he's been doing pretty good as well. And Abedag is surprisingly doing good for a rookie, I think, in the middle, middle lane. And Odo has his good games. So I think they're going to do decent. But I don't expect that much from Schalke on, uh, coming mm -hmm. into the playoffs. You might argue in the same camp where you just think that they're, they're all right, they're going to do okay, but probably don't expect too much heading into playoffs. I just think um, the thing that is going to give uh, teams uh, longevity is... Um, how good they play around mid. Uh, mid lane decides everything. It's uh, central. It's uh, uh, the wave crashes first there. So you have, uh, if you have priority mid, then you're going to be able to dominate the map. And I think this is where Schalke are weaker. I think uh, uh, their 2v2 around mid lane looks very uh, uh, kind of, it, of, of course, Abadage, he's. Um, He's a rookie, so it's not fully fledged. But I think the teams that are going to look the most scary, as I mentioned before, is OG, is us, is uh, G2, because of how uh, well we understand how much we have to play around mid and how we have to use it. And I think um, this is where Schalke will falter. I think they've had a lot of success playing through bot lane, but this doesn't last. It never does. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we see the same thing that you brought up with Misfits there on these teams that like to play through the bot lane, that maybe this is a problem that they're going to run into in the future. Um, Fnatic are a team that have kind of been playing through the bot lane. Uh, have had their moments where they've double TP'd bottom, have also just had some games where they've randomly gotten a, a kill at level one with a Gallia support, and obviously it snowballs pretty quickly from there. Um, this is a team that I think a lot of people just assume is going to make playoffs at this point because they are rising, they are doing very well uh, in their last few games. And obviously it's also Fnatic. They have the pedigree, they have the legacy. Uh, Attila, when you look at this team, I know we talked a little bit about them earlier when we were, in regards to your matchup versus them. Um, are they a contestant here? Because at this point we are, we've almost hit every single team. And right now, from what you guys have said, every one of these teams is a playoffs contendant. So at some point someone's got to give. Is Fnatic another team that's going to make it in here? I was counting the teams, but yeah, I think so. I think like G2S, Origin, Schalke, wait, Splice, yeah, are basically locked in into playoffs, and then you basically have SK, which is almost guaranteed as well. And I believe they're going to do well and get into the playoffs. And then you got to choose between Misfits, Fnatic. I think Fnatic takes a, a, a lead on that. I think the tricky part is uh, the scoreline. If it wasn't for Fnatic's scoreline right now, I would say uh, for sure they are top six. But because of the scoreline, it's hard to say so. I think uh, Splice and Schalke, uh, if we make a power ranking, they would be lower down, but they are uh, sitting on some hefty points, so that helps a lot. I think when it comes to Fnatic, is they had uh, a very good week, mm. but I think uh, they got away with uh, a lot. I think OG, dropped the ball big time. This was not the OG that we wanted to see. This was an OG that died, it died level one, two, three, four, five. And Kaiser was 6-0 and the game was over. So I feel like Fnatic weren't really, really tested there. I think the game against us, uh, they did uh, better and we did a lot of, a lot of mistakes. So maybe from my bias, I also feel like uh, 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 they kind of stole away the victories uh, from uh, this week. Uh, I think they did a lot better though. I want to give uh, credit to where it's due. They did a lot better, and I think this is the type of momentum that can carry over to even more. 
So I, I think uh, coming into the next weeks, I'm positive about Fnatic, and I think uh, they can do better. But I wouldn't overhype them based off of this week uh, alone because they beat uh, two of the teams that uh, I would hype up the most. And of course, they're also in a difficult spot where you talk about SK contesting for playoffs, and SK obviously owns the head-to-head -head against Fnatic, so they definitely have not made their path any three easier. 3-0. No. Yeah, 3-0. Get them. <laughs> 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 Just the worst way to start a season for Fnatic. Poor, poor boys. Big rip. Final team that we want to talk about is G2. Now, for a long time, we had trouble talking about this team because they just won. They just beat everybody uh, quite handily in a lot of cases. Now, they've lost the game to Origin, but this week they obviously uh, a little bit easier schedule. Um, as Schalke kind of just really struggled. Uh, I'm curious, when you guys look at this team, are they still this uncontested S-tier giant above everyone else? Are you still putting them clearly head and shoulders at number one, or is it, do you feel like it's getting closer and closer for G2? I mean, even when we faced them and they were undefeated, I never seen them as such. I don't believe in unbeatable teams. I, I don't think that's a thing, and... There's always a way that you can exploit the team uh, mistakes and weaknesses, and I think they're really good. That's that's a fact, right? That's why they're standing in the first place. But I think I think they're beatable. So that's what matters, right? I, I think you reach a line uh, after you've gone through all this crap about uh, teams uh, playing through bot lane and playing through top. Uh, you reach a line where uh, you just have to perform better. I think it comes down to uh, doing the most basic things just better and making as little mistakes as possible. I think G2 has very little weaknesses. I think the game against OG, OG kind of stole it away from them because they drafted full AP. And if if G2 realized, you know, Perks, he played against Zed once. Caps got, uh, got the Zed treatment once too, but he won against it. If they realized that Zed was the band to make there, then all of a sudden, what Nukta is going to play Talon or some shit? You know, it's a, it's a, it's a game, it's a draft that only can work in a best of one. If that was a best of three on the day, I think they would have lost. I think OG is still a great team, but I think G2 still is the team to beat. Feels like it remains the case, and um, we have seen hiccups. Obviously, there have been some questionable early games from G2, some some decisions, and there's obviously plenty of the games, uh, which is obviously what, which is what anyone will really cite if they want to prove this team is a power team where someone pops off on this team and yeah. just destroys it. Maybe it's the Yankos Elise, maybe it's some other pick from somewhere. But for now, um, remaining clearly at the top. So now we get to make a tier list, but before we do, reminder that this is what our preseason tier list looked like, which I'll say... It's not the bad. Which it... It was really bad like the first three weeks because we were <laughs> super wrong on a lot of these things the first three weeks. But this turned out not bad in the end. Now I'm going to just jam all this over here. But if it's okay with you gentlemen, I'll just leave Rogue and XL in D tier. Does that work? Yeah, it's cool. I think Rogue deserves a C maybe. It depends on how much we need to use the slots. <laughs> okay, do you want to start from the top then? We can start. Like, okay. Is G2, are, is it comfortable to say that they're uncontested in S tier? Or are you guys ambitious of to take a to make a call that Vitality belongs up there too. I think right now we are A. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to give you the top A. The next team that comes to mind, um, you mentioned OG being in the top three with you guys. Even after kind of some of the inconsistent showings you see, do you, do you see them as another A tier team? Are they still above the rest of the competition? For me, it's weird because last week they sucked. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's very true. The week before, they were great. The week before they were A, last week they were C. So it's so does that mean I mean we were putting them in B? Do they just get demoted based on <laughs> based on that? I mean, what do you? I mean, and obviously you guys have scrim info to pull off of. I'm not. I don't want to know who you're scrimming. You guys can keep that info to yourself. But uh, but maybe you see something. That you might have more info on these teams than I do because I just all I see are the stage games, right? Yeah. And the stage games are obviously. Whew, one week was real, real good, and one week was real, real bad. Yeah. What do you think, Attila? Where does OG yeah, I will put Origin H is because the B teams, I think, they are better than the B teams that I will put on, you know. Like, for example, I will okay. put Schalke and Fnatic B tier, mm. and I don't think Origin belongs there. It's fair. All right, I'll move Origin up there for okay. now. Why don't we talk about Schalke and Fnatic then as the next teams on the list? Schalke, good record, once again, tied in third place with Splice, but not enough to get into A tier. Before you guys played, I would have put them in A tier. Now, of course, this is you know two weeks later, and things look a little bit different. But similar to Origin, they feel like they maybe, were really maybe I'm good. Maybe biased, right? Because you know, rivalry and all this stuff, rivalry, and then yes. they got like 
you know, hard pounded last time. Mm -hmm. And I just feel like both games that they played against us, they were really inactive team and they were just waiting us for doing a mistake. And first game we gave it away and in second game they had absolutely no chance at all. So I just don't see them like being in the top of the standing. So I'll put them bit here and they should be happy about it. It's it's weird because I would put all four of those teams on B tier. You put all four, so is there just because <laughs> I I mean I don't mind that. Well, there's five teams here, Yamada. Yeah, yeah splice. <laughs> is this just the, the biggest B tier we've ever had? Like, <laughs> just like I don't know. Gap because is closing. All these teams like SK started pretty good and then looked really bad and now they look okay again. Splice are. I, I would the thing is I, I would probably put splice C. That's rough. Because I think if if Splice face any of these teams, I would take you the, would other vote team. the other team. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, in best of fives, they have no chance. Splice, I think, against any of the B teams. Do you still want to move Rogue up to C tier? Uh, no, no. Because I feel like that that at that, that point that we're, we're been, trolling a little bit. Because like, up, you know? while Splice may not have have a super favored matchup against some of these teams, I mean. Oh, man, there's so many teams that I want to be like, oh, I could see maybe this going their way, but they've recently lost to their um, team. So it's, it's team hard maybe to put Excel a little bit lower. <laughs> yeah, that's why the D minus. <laughs> <laughs> we now have a D minus for Excel. Sorry, boys. The Urgot Jungle really, I am not willing to give you anything after that one. Okay. How do you feel about this? Do we want to rank order them? Because right now this feels very ordered. This feels very unordered to me. Like, do you think that any one of these B tier teams rises above the rest? Hmm. I, I guess I have a little bit more faith in SK because I think Pyrian and Selfmade can make something out of that 2v2 mid. Mm -hmm. But when I see these teams facing off, I feel like it's just a bot lane, bot lane fiesta. Yeah. You have Misfits, Fnatic, Schalke. Who gets Kaizen? Who gets fed? <laughs> who has two items? Who has three items? Crit, crit, crit. You know, it's 75% chance of winning the game. Oh <laughs> it's, uh, it's quite the party. So it I feel is like actually crazy that all these teams are... A little bit about the ball in right now. I feel like SK could make the step to get to the next level. I have the most faith for them to do so. I think if SK win win the lane bottom, they win all these three teams. But yeah, but I feel like that's so true for Misfits too, man. I mean, if Misfits win the ball, and I think they can beat any of these three teams too. No, yeah, it go, it's the same for all of these teams. So no? do we, do we as basically well? just have four teams who have very similar identities here in our B tier. I would say the reason I rate SK a little, little bit higher is because I think they can drop the Ezreal and then they can go a different route in the game. And to clarify, because I realize for you guys in podcast land that I'm not describing the tiers enough, so I apologize for that. Uh, Excel and Rogue currently D tier. Splice and Soul possession of C tier. B is a lot of teams. It's Schalke, it is Fnatic, it is SK Gaming, it is Misfits. A tier is Vitality and Origin. And S tier, still uncontested for now, is uh, G2 Esports. I feel pretty good about this tier list, all things considered. Although I do think it says a lot about our playoffs race that this is so B tier focused. And then the final question to round this out is, who's not making it? One of these B tier teams can't make it, right? Like that's that's the reality that we're looking at. Now, you guys already mentioned Fnatic, potentially in a difficult spot. Because it's weird, because this is a tier list for the level of the team, but the chances of getting into playoffs are vastly different. Because sure. then I would put Splice higher because they're seven five. Fnatic uh, is five wins right now. The five yep. wins, right? Five, five seven. Five, seven. Uh, they need to win a lot of games. So if someone's dropping out, I guess it's uh, Fnatic. Because you're sure the miracle run is 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 real and alive, but they need to win what five out of six games. Yeah, it's like insanely difficult. And their schedule is not easy. Yeah, this was one of the easier... Uh, it wasn't really an easier week, actually, all things considered. Mm -hmm. But they definitely... I don't, won't say it got lucky, but they had a favorable week this week. Um, if they were even, I would put uh, money on it. But, whoa. I almost dropped the cup. <laughs> yep. You're good. No harm, no foul. All right, well, let's get some of the audience takes. Now you guys took to Twitter in response to our to my call to action. For all of us here, playoff hot takes. Um, real hot take here given our discussions today. At Sasagami says, G2 versus Splice final. Schalke is going to fall, going to get knocked out of playoffs. Uh, Misfits will pull the upset and knock Fnatic out of top six. 
and SK are going to make top six instead. So I just want to start with the G2 versus Splice final. What's it going to take, guys, for the G2 versus Splice final? Remember, this is Twitter hot takes, so I'm not, these are not these people coming in like these are my reasonable opinions. What would need to happen for Splice to get this final's appearance? Oof. Zombie apocalypse. Zombie apocalypse. And the uh, 80% of the other teams get infected. And they no longer have viable rosters. Got it. That could be one. I just want some of what he's having. Like, <laughs> it must be insane, no? <laughs> 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 that must be woo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> to be fair, though, I clipped his other tweet. He did have you guys in third, which isn't super favorable. Thanks, dude. <laughs> all considered, but he did like specifically <laughs> stop us in the follow up tweet to make to make it clear that like here's his actual stack stack rating, which is you guys in third and Schalke in fourth. So at least he's not uh, dissing. Now, one person who I think is just trying to fire shots at you guys has way too long of a name for me to clip out, but their Twitter tag is using a covert username to avoid getting caught at gallbladder something. Sorry, dude, your name was too long for me to clip it with a snipping tool. It says, Vitality won't make it to top three. Ooh. We won't make it to top three? It says, this, this Twitter anime avatar is coming in hot saying that you guys aren't making top three. Is there any way that it happens other than zombie apocalypse? Tell him, Attila. Tell him. Oh, I'm pregnant. And you're like, what? You're pregnant? And I'm like, yeah, I, I guess we're talking about impossible things, no? How, how are we not top three, by the way? I'm like, come on. Come on now. That would be a twist. <laughs> I would say that would be a twist. You know you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like even if we just make it to second place on regular split, even if we really do bad in best of fives, we're going to be top three, right? So I just see us really like with 90% chances of mm -hmm. finishing second this split and even if we, I don't know, if we drop the ball really hard and we have to go to best of fives, I don't think we're a bad team on best of fives. We have a lot of cheese picks. We have a lot of adaptation. We can play for top, mid, jungle, bot. Like, we can play for everything. So Also, our head-to-head -head is really good. Really, yeah. really good. Uh, we have a chance to go 2-0 against OG, uh, Schalke 1-1, and uh, uh, yeah. I think that people don't realize is that in the new format, you're automatically top three if you get second place in the regular season yes. uh -uh. without playing a game. <laughs> so, Rotterdam, woo! woo. <laughs> and a spot in Rift Rivals, guys. Come on, who's excited? Second place yeah. regular season, guaranteed for Rift Rivals. That's what it's all about. I'm um, actually not excited. I hate NA ever since World Championship. <laughs> it's time for revenge. <laughs> you're gonna have to. You're gonna have to help me build the narrative, though. You gotta be like, I'm really excited to crush NA. Korea, dude. Korea is easy, but NA, woof. These guys play <laughs> play League of Legends like they play Fortnite. Too crazy. Too wild, dude. <laughs> you're going to find, you're going to see him. We're going to get the ninja equivalent on stage for Rift <laughs> Rivals. Maybe. I don't know, man. NA is its own, NA is its own thing. Uh, but it's in Europe this time, right? I'm not sure, actually. I don't know the specifics. I would assume so. You just put it in the middle so both are jet lagged. It's yeah, I would, I would, I would, ooh, that's a good idea. We find an <laughs> island, right? Like a yeah, Bermuda yeah. Triangle. Cap Verde, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's equally jet lagged. That's the, the modifier. Or they put you in like some crazy roller coaster. So you, you get the experience of jet lag. Um, the last thing, match of the week this week, Origin versus Vitality. It's a big game. And we need a bet. People have been missing the bets. We missed two. Apologies, dear audience. And we have kind of half of a bet, which is important. We figured out one side of the stakes, which is that I will obviously be voting for OG, as I think it would be a conflict of interest to have you guys vote for OG, yes. given that you have a pretty good way to control the outcome of the game <laughs> if you wanted to. Um, but it will involve Upset getting a very beautiful song sung to him. By My favorite. By Attila. Now, we want something steamy, something romantic, something passionate. And Yamato, you've assured me that Attila is the best singer on the team. Is the most tone deaf person I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> I, it's, it's horrible. It's like, it's worse than nails on a board. This is, no, you know, in everything, I want to give you as much confidence as possible and support you, but this is a, is a no for me, dog, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. And it's, that's what's important. Now, the thing is, is I, I just need to know, what can I do that's sufficiently embarrassing to balance out you singing a song to Upset? I could sing a song to Upset, but he's already going to hit me in the face with the pie. So I, it doesn't seem the same. Is there anyone you want me to sing to? I could sing to you. I could sing to Jizu. I could sing to a random player. I could sing to Crown Shot. Name a player. Jessica. <laughs> Kadrel. <laughs> <laughs> Give me somebody. Who do you want? I can sing. I'll do a dance. I mean, I don't know. I want, I want the Vitality rap. 
That's yeah, what I want. For me. Dedicated, like the year of the Nuktag one was beautiful. If we can get something like that, you know, I would be very happy. I will, I will definitely, I can give you a Vitadra. I cannot promise the production quality of the mediocre rap battles of LEC, but I can get you, I can get you a, a little Bells. Vitality rap. I can get you DJ. I, I might be able to bring back DJ Cowbell. <laughs> he will, you will have just beaten his team though, so he may be a yeah. little sad. But. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Cowbell has enough debt on this show already. He still has to get FNC shaped into the side of his head. Yeah. <laughs> All right, deal. Vitality rap. If Vitality win, if Origin win, you have to sing Upset a Song. I can't believe it. Love it. No stakes for me. I just get to enjoy no, it. No, you get to sit back because we have a dinner <laughs> bet with you. You yes, already yes. have to dress up and okay. sing Johnny Cash and go to a steakhouse in a ridiculous costume, which we're now leaning towards Jon Snow, going for Jon Snow. <laughs> so we'll get you like a sword. You can be that weirdo in the restaurant with the sword. <laughs> cut, the, cut the steak. <laughs> <laughs> we might get kicked out of a steakhouse. That's for that bet. All right. That's it. That's all I wanted. We have steaks. Here, we'll shake on it. You ready? Yes. Vitality versus Origin, folks. It's locked in. Musical bet. Rap versus song for our boy Upset. And, uh, oh, someone suggested poetry, but we missed the poetry opportunity. We'll get you rap. We'll go full hip-hop. We'll get you an absolute banger. <laughs> That's all, all the best for Vitality. That's going to do it for us for uh, season three, episode seven. Thank you both so much for coming. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Uh, we'll get you a nice graphic showing off our power ranking that we produced this episode, and we'll talk more about the playoff race in the weeks to come. Until then, we'll see you next time.